the construction and Charles Ford started in, 60, in the 1670s and it took about 12 years to complete. It was meant to be the, the most important coastal fortification defending the port of Sandy Point, which is one of the most strategically important ports in the Caribbean during the height of the British, of the Atlantic sugar, sugar industry and the Atlantic slave trade. And I always used to tell my students when I was a teacher that sugar back then was what oil is in the 20th and the 21st century. And whenever something is extremely valuable, military resources shall be put to defend it. Charles Foote is unique in his construction in that usually there was always a tussle between local authorities and the British government who should fund, fund erection of a fortification. In the case of Charles Foote, King Charles II actually dipped his hands into his, his, his personal purse to, to finance the completion of Charles Foote. That's how important the fortification was to the English in terms of Sinkitz and his importance as a colony at that time at that time when singles were being shared between the English and the French and there was a fear of the French taking over what, at, even, even as early as then, what the English knew was a, was a colony that had a lot of, you know, promise. So it took 12 years of fun and was financed personally by King Charles II after whom it was named. Originally it was named Cleverly Hill Fort but when it was completed it was renamed Charles Fort. Just like its sister fortification, Brimstone Hill, it was built using the skills, the labor and the skills of African stonemasons. Now, Charles Fort today is one of the, not only one of the oldest standing fortresses in the Eastern Caribbean, it is one of the oldest standing masonry structures, period. Most of the stock buildings in, 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 the, in the Caribbean, the churches, our great houses, cathedrals, fort, etc., originally, in the early days of settlement would have been timber buildings made out of wood and later on when either weather or hurricanes or fire destroyed them would have been rebuilt. Charles Ford is unique in that it was planned from the beginning as a comprehensive fortification made out of masonry, in other words stone. And when it was completed there was no major alteration. So what you see today is what was originally planned when the fort was completed in around the 1680s, 1690s. Yeah? And so there are even some experts at the U.S. National Park Service who believe that Charles Fort in its present form might actually even be predate the existing Spanish fortifications in Cuba, Puerto Rico, etc. Because what you see today, these fortifications, El Moro, etc., is a result of years of rebuilding, etc. So it is one of the oldest standing masonry structures in the Eastern Caribbean, and it was because of Brim Charles Fort where Brimstone Hill exists. Brimstone Hill was originally conceived as a backup to helping Charles Fort defend the Sandy Point anchorage. In other words, if an enemy landed on the ground to prevent an enemy from taking Charles Fort from, 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 from a landward attack. It was only much later that Brimstone superseded Charles Fort when artillery technology evolved that you, you were able to defend the anchorage from an inland fort like Brimstone Hill. But, original, but for many years, Charles Fort was seen as the major fortification defending Sandy Point and Brimstone Hill as a backup to Charles Fort. But if it were not for Charles Fort, Brimstone Hill would never, would never exist. In 1853, the British troops from both Brimstone Hill and Charles Fort were withdrawn. Many of them were sent to the Crimea to fight in the Crimean War. And then in 1890, the fort was made into a leper asylum it was named the Hansen's home because that's another, Hansen's disease is another name for leprosy because it's named after the doctor, the Scandinavian doctor who, was, who made a lot of discoveries about leprosy. And it remained a leper asylum up until 1996. Okay. And it was a leper asylum that served not only St. Kitts but Antigua, Barbuda, the British Virgin Islands and several neighboring islands. So it had, it played not only a role locally but regionally in terms of the history of institutionalized healthcare. I do, I do. Not only a personal connection because I lived close to the two at one time, but Brimson Hill has recently assumed management of Charles Ford. We were able to make a case supported by the National Trust for Charles Ford because of his tax significance to get legal protection. And thankfully, the government ac accepted the case we made, and Charles Fort was vested in the St. Christopher National Trust, and the St. Christopher National Trust has agreed to turn over management of Charles Fort to the Brimstone and Fortress National Park Society. So, as site manager for both Brimstone and Fortress and Charles Fort, I feel not only a personal but a professional connection to these two sites. 
while Charles Fort is not, at least not yet, officially inscribed as a UNESCO heritage site like Brimstone Hill, there are many, myself included, who feel that it has strong potential as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. As one of the oldest standing structures in the, in, in the Eastern Caribbean, and perhaps even the wider Caribbean, to have been constructed by some of the earliest stone masons who would have come to this part of the world. It has hemispheric importance. So Charles Fort is extremely important, as, a, as, a, as, a, as important as Brimstone here, I, may, I, 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 would, I could argue. Yeah, there's some of things I have in mind. We would like to restore this site, remove the vegetation, restore this site, have an interpretation the center there, telling the history of this site in its two phases, as a fortification with, which had, as I said, hemispheric importance, and also as a leper asylum, which had regional importance. Um, I would also love to recreate the former lepers' garden. When there were lepers there, because they were limited in, they were restricted in how they movement, they grew a garden there, both ornamental and also provide their fruits and vegetables. I would love to rehabilitate that garden and create a botanical garden there, you know, based on the former lepers' garden. That, and to me, this would be a, tr a tribute to these people who, too much of their life, was shunned you know, and treated as pariahs. It would be a way of you know, making tribute to this, because they were human beings like us. They suffer from an unfortunate disease that was no, no fault of theirs. To me, 1492 means an event that had brought about cataclysmic changes in the Caribbean. It was tragic, an alternate tragedy, you know, greater things happened. In 1492, you had a meeting of cultures from Europe as with the indigenous cultures here in the Caribbean. Many of those indigenous societies were since decimated you know, by diseases and weapons brought to the side of the world. world. And then as a result, Africans, our African ancestors were brought here to replace them for the labor that was needed, for the cheap, for the cheap labor and the free labor that was needed. After these tragic circumstances, we have today have a, a Caribbean culture, a cre Caribbean Creole culture, that is perhaps the most vibrant culture out of this planet. In, and in terms of its music, uh, our art forms, our folklore, etc. Even, 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 even when you put all the Caribbean islands together, including even the largest one, Cuba, we are still a very small geographic entity. But in terms of the cultural influence we have had on this world, you know, that has far outweighed our actual size. So out of these tragic circumstances brought on by Columbus and those who followed him, we have today created the most beautiful and vibrant culture anywhere on this planet.